Software Vulnerability Month absolutely is not over yet, and at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't hear about more critical bug reports long into May and June as well. Hopefully all these critical bugs don't end up interrupting your summer vacation. But anyway, today's bug starts off as a really old bug, 24 years in fact, in the GNU C library. And this might have been a bug that people in the past very well knew about, but it didn't appear to cause any real problems. You know, that's actually something that happens more often than you would think in very large software projects. The developer might know that there is a bug in a particular function, but it passes all their testing and the QA team's testing, so it makes its way into production. And then of course, later on, someone's able to exploit that bug to get remote code execution, and we get a serious bug and some hot fixes like this. So the researcher that discovered this bug, Charles Full, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, actually discovered that you can exploit this glibc bug to take over virtually any PHP application in existence. And in case you didn't know, about 80% of the websites out there on the web still to this day rely on PHP in some way. Some of the most popular web applications like WordPress and Magento are built almost entirely in PHP. And the majority of those PHP web applications are running on some kind of Linux server. In fact, there's a popular tech stack from the 90s that's still used today called LAMP where you have a Linux distro for your operating system, Apache for the web server, and MySQL for the database, and then of course PHP for the programming language. And the vast majority of Linux distros out there rely on glibc. In fact, the only distro I can even think of off the top of my head that doesn't is Alpine Linux, which isn't used in production that often because it's a little bit difficult to get some packages working with the muscle library. And funny enough, another stack that's probably immune to this bug is WAMP, which is the same thing as LAMP, but you're just using Windows as the operating system instead. Uh, but as you can probably guess, WAMP stacks are almost never recommended by anybody because mixing PHP code on a Windows server is really just asking for trouble. And to make matters worse, this bug, the versions of glibc that it affects is 2.39 and older, which is pretty much every single version of glibc out there unless you literally just updated to a hotfixed version recently. So if you're running a PHP application on any Linux distro other than Muscle, please pause this video and go update your system. Now, as far as the technical details go for how this bug actually works, there is an abstract available on OpenWalls so far. More details are going to be released in a talk later on, uh, but we can see that the bug is triggered by glibc's internationalization conversion function, or iconv, as it's called in the source code, that lets you convert between different character sets. Now, this is needed for some languages like converting between character sets. Um, for example, if you're going for like Arabic or Chinese, they have different character sets than English. And it's actually the ISO 2022 Chinese extended character set that triggers up to a four byte buffer overflow when you're converting strings to this extended Chinese character set. So when converting between the character sets, there's escape sequences. Uh, and I think that these are the specific ones outlined here because there's more escape sequences than this. Um, but these are used to tell the computer to convert to that specific character set and Something about the logic of this escaping with certain characters in glibc was flawed and it allowed you to write an overflow of one, two, or three bytes uh, with fixed values. And that's enough for hackers to be able to take over your system. Now, there isn't a full write-up about how this bug in glibc 
can specifically be used to take over the PHP engine because so far, like this is only really a big deal if you're also running PHP, right? You know, they mentioned that, um, or, or at least there hasn't been any mention of any other uh, programming languages that are affected by this yet. But if I had to guess, this is just a guess based on the abstract here, um, where he says that, um, that, you know, it's an old bug that is reachable in multiple well-known libraries or programs and it proved rarely exploitable, but on PHP, it led to some amazing results. So this makes me think that you could probably trigger this exploit by doing something like changing the character encodings in the HTTP headers that are being sent to a PHP application to this Chinese extended <laughs> encoding. And certain characters can lead to the RCE uh, or maybe there's some kind of text form that needs to be messed with as well. We'll find out for sure on May 10th or 11th after that OffenseCon conference that uh, Charles Full is going to be speaking at. Now, let's address the elephant in the room other than PHP, which is the fact that so many of the bugs that have been discovered and patched this month that I've talked about on my channel have been found in open source software projects. And this has some people questioning the whole open source security model, but things are actually working as intended. These bugs get fixed much quicker than we would see in a proprietary ecosystem because security researchers don't just have to rely on black box testing and trying to report things to Microsoft or Apple or whoever and hope that they fix it. And with backdoors like the XZ vulnerability, I don't even think something like that would get caught in a proprietary ecosystem at all, or at least it would take a very long time. Like if Windows logon took 200 milliseconds longer, nobody outside of Microsoft would really even be able to diagnose that. They would probably just chalk it up to, you know, Microsoft having bloated code that's very slow. And it probably would have taken their engineers a whole lot longer to find the bug than they were able to find the XZ bug. So keep on sticking with open source software. Make sure you update to glibc 2.40 or whatever applicable hot fixed version for your specific Linux distro so that your web app doesn't get hacked. Also, make sure to like and share this video to hack the algorithm and check out my website, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like this base.win tee that I'm wearing right now, the tie-dye tour tee, come and find a tee, little Damon tee, or the Libre tee. And you can also get accessories for your smartphone or computer and save 10% automatically at checkout for all orders on base.win when you pay in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.